We say that the plasma membrane of a cell is selectively permeable or semi-permeable. Those two words mean pretty much the same thing, that some things can get in and out across the plasma membrane and other things can't. Whether something can cross the membrane or not depends on several factors. The first is the size of the molecule that you're trying to get across the membrane. Smaller things can cross membranes relatively easily, while larger things have a harder time getting across. The second factor that makes a difference as to whether something can cross the membrane or not is its polarity or charge. Nonpolar molecules in general can cross a membrane more easily. It's relatively easy for them to wiggle past the fatty acid tails in the middle of the membrane. However, polar or charged molecules have a difficult time getting past those fatty acid tails. So they typically are unable to cross a membrane without help. The third factor that affects what can get across the membrane is the presence of a transport protein. If you have something that can't get across the membrane without help, the presence of transport proteins might be able to let it cross the membrane. Transport proteins create openings or tunnels through the membrane that molecules are able to pass through to get from one side to the other. We're going to talk about three different types of transport. They vary based on the energy needed, the direction that the molecules are being transported, and what sort of molecules we're talking about. We're going to talk about passive transport. Passive transport doesn't require energy. The reason passive transport doesn't require energy is we're letting molecules move the way they would naturally move. Molecules will naturally move from areas where they're highly concentrated to areas where they're less concentrated. So imagine that I take a whole lot of people and I cram them all up in one corner of the room. They don't want to just stay there all crowded together. As they move, they'll separate and get further apart and spread to the areas that are less crowded. That's what molecules do as well. We describe this by saying that the molecules move down their concentration gradient. They move from an area where they're highly concentrated down to an area where they're less concentrated. This is what would happen naturally, so this doesn't require energy. That's passive transport. Active transport requires energy. Active transport requires energy because it's moving molecules from an area where they're less concentrated up their concentration gradient to areas where they're more concentrated. This is like trying to shove all the people together in the corner. It takes energy to get them all shoved in there when they would much rather spread out throughout a room. The third type of transport is bulk transport or vesicular transport. And this we're not worried about whether we're moving up or down a concentration gradient. Instead, we're moving molecules in or out of a cell in a vesicle. This is good for transporting large molecules or large amounts of molecules because you can get large things or a lot of things in and out of a cell easily if you package them in a vesicle. And we'll see more about that later. 